Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, we are going to continue the series, what I started two weeks ago. Today, part three. Uh, my topic is the new covenant. Today, I'm going to talk uh, the blood that speak better than able, right? Better things. And uh, so let's go to the, directly, let's go to the word of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 to 24. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 to 24. But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of, the, of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Right. Here it's, we can see, uh, actually, uh, according to the Old Testament, during the time of Moses, under the law, uh, the sight, whenever God showed up, actually it was terrifying. And Moses was saying, I was terrified and trembling when he saw the smoke, when he saw the fire, uh, you know, the darkness of the cloud, everything, the Lord, uh, the voice of trumpet, and the voice of God, everything when he saw, it was really terrifying. And the people said, we don't want to hear God's word because it's so terrifying. Under the old covenant, when the people went to the Mount Zion, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, where they got the uh, Ten Commandments, God said even the animals not to come to uh, the foot of the mountain. They have to kill, be killed. So people, even people, nobody can, uh, I mean, go to the top of the mountain. Only Moses was allowed. Even Joshua was, uh, Joshua went halfway. But people stood in the foot of the mountain and they started worshipping, right? When God showed up, it was terrifying or maybe fearful sight, right? And uh, so when it comes to the new covenant, right? He says, verse 12, 22, but you have come to the Mount Zion. Mount Zion and to the city of the living God and heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels, to, me, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. I like verse 24 today. That's not my, uh, actually the text. To Jesus the mediator of the new covenant. We'll be dealing with that. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Right? Now the question is, uh, how it is better than was the blood of Abel? Right? The blood of Jesus Christ is better than the blood of Abel. Both the blood was speaking. The blood of Abel and blood of Jesus, both were speaking, right? The Bible clearly says uh, in Hebrews, what we read, when the blood of Jesus speaks about, he always speaks better, right? And uh, what he say? Uh, speaks better things than that of Abel. Today, that's what my topic is actually. Blood of Jesus speaks better things which is supposed to be enjoying by the believers, right? So here, uh, so the difference between the blood of Jesus and the blood of Abel, if you go to Genesis chapter 4, we can see a little bit, uh, there's an account given, Genesis chapter 4, uh, I'm going to read it from verse 1 uh, uh, quickly, after that, Maybe Sendai can read from verse 8. Now Adam 
knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and born Cain say, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Right? And then verse 5 says, But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and he, his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fall, uh, fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. Right? Verse 8 says, Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Okay? So now, we can, we can see both are brothers, right? Uh, the firstborn was Cain. He was the oldest son. And then Abel. So, in the Old Testament, during their time, there was no writing to pass God's word one to another. It was passed by mouth to mouth. So definitely, God must have spoken to Adam and Eve, uh, what are the things they are supposed to do regarding a divine thing? How to have fellowship with God and so on, right? So Adam must have, definitely he must have taught his son Cain and Abel in their life what and what to do regard, concerning uh, worship or whatever it is. So one of the, uh, the part of the uh, worship is bring offering to the Lord. So under the old covenant, it was advised everybody to bring uh, a sheep or goat, right? Uh, in order to shed the blood before God. Right? As a burnt offering, as a thanksgiving offering, they have to bring it. But here, Cain, he was a tiller of the ground, he was a farmer. So he brought some of his vegetables or maybe fruits to the Lord to offer an offering. Right? The Bible clearly says his offering was not accepted by God. That's one thing we have to learn. Uh, if we try to do our own thing except God's way, God is not going to respect it. He's not going to receive it from you. You can bring the tithes, you can bring offering for the sake of bringing. Right? But uh, sometimes people used to say, you see now, for an example, our own church uh, here, okay, uh, we have said because to, uh, because we want to see, uh, in order to maintain our account, we always encourage the people to bring their tithes and offering, put into the envelope, and put into the offering basket. Okay? That was uh, our system. Because it's easy to maintain the account. Right? Now, uh, one brother in our congregation, uh, he, uh, I never seen, or even Sister Shamali, uh, that time uh, Ponya was not here, right? And uh, Shamali also said, he never give tithes or offering. Right? And uh, because a certain situation, I had to check it, okay? And then, uh, when we discussed, then I openly told him. So when it comes to 
uh, I mean, almost like a legal matter, like, you know, uh, regarding certain particular thing. Then I asked, brother, even you don't give tithes or the offering to the Lord. I was honest and I was obey. I mean, I was, I was open. Not to point out, he need to put tithes to offering. That is not my motive. Regarding certain things, then actually it came, the talk came, the brother was forcing, I am bringing tithes to the church and I, am, I put my offering and all. Then said, no, I never, uh, we no, never found your name in the envelope. Then he said, uh, long time ago, I listened to a message of a pastor and he said, when we give to God, we mustn't show to the other, we, without the other people known, we have to give. The Bible says when the right hand gives, the left hand should know. That is talking about the uh, poor people, I mean uh, beggars. If you want to give arm to somebody, you don't broadcast. You don't tell anybody. You, don't, you give to people uh, and don't inform the others. Right? God is, a, no, God is not a beggar. You don't deal with the, uh, that way. Then I said... Then in our discussion, he, say, I, he said, I bring tithes and offering and I put it in the box directly without mentioning my name. Then I said, brother, there's an order in our church in order to maintain. Then I, when I talked to him, he uh, saw exactly similar thing what Cain was doing. God's method is different. We can do our own thing. Whatever we do, does God accept our giving? Right? So he brought vegetables. He is supposed to bring an animal or a bird in order to uh, have a burnt offering. But he has brought the uh, vegetable or maybe fruits out of his garden. And God rejected. Number one, he was rebellious against God's word. He wanted to do his own thing. He was not obedient. On the other side, Abel, he was obedient to the word of God, the way he was instructed by the parent, he brought his offering. What did he brought? Right? Look at this, what it says. Mm. Yeah, verse 4. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock. The firstborn was always best. Hello? I said the firstborn was always the best. And the seventh one also best. <laughs> right? So he had said, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Okay, this is nothing to do with Cain and Abel. Whatever they want to bring to God, they brought it. Okay, that's a different thing. But here, uh, in, in a way to say, Abel brought the best of the flock and gave offering to the Lord. But the things, whatever he brought, number one, obedient. Number two, in the book of Hebrew, it says he brought it by faith, which shows us Cain brought out of rebellion. Secondly, he, he didn't bring it by faith. <laughs> so there are two things. If you do anything in the kingdom of God, especially under the new covenant, if you don't do it by faith, you're not going to receive anything. Okay? Now here... Uh, God is the one who uh, respected Abel's uh, offering. So, when you, uh, but what we read, there it says, Cain got jealous. He got angry. How come God accepted only yours? Abel is nothing to do with that. Right? He obeyed God's word. And he brought the best of, out, of, uh, out of the flock and he brought uh, offering to the Lord. So God is the one who respected one and they re rejected the other one. Right? So he got angry 
over Abel. And the Bible says when they were in the field, uh, Cain rose up and killed Abel. So there, Abel's blood was shed. Okay? So verse 11 says, okay, verse 11, I'm sorry, verse 10 says, and he said, what have you done? God is saying, the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Right? Which means, after the death, the blood was shed. Abel's blood was shed. The ground uh, took the blood out of him and Cain really killed him. So the blood was speaking to God. Sometimes in the family, Abel, uh, Adam must have spoken, Eve must have spoken, why did you do this and that? Uh, innocent fellow, this and that, all those things. Even in today, uh, there are a whole lot of people are uh, killed, right? Uh, so, Abel's blood was talking to God. What did he talk? Right? Abel's blood was talking vengeance. Why? The next verse says, when his blood was talking to God, God immediately answered. Just go here. Right? Yeah. Verse 12 says, when you till the ground, it shall no longer, here, uh, God is cursing Cain, and punishing him. What is the punishment he, say, he gives? When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A figure and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. In other words, wandering person all over the earth. So in other words, actually, uh, Cain was saying, this punishment is... Uh, I can't bear it. Unbearable punishment. This is not for one day or one week or not even one year. It's a lifelong punishment. You are the tiller of the ground or you are a farmer, so the ground won't produce anything for you because you killed the, your brother. Because of Abel's blood, I am punishing you. That's a curse. And also, uh, it says, uh, verse 12, it says, When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A figurative and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. Which means, you will be a wandering person. Uh, you, the ground will be hard to you. Nothing will produce to, for you. when you. That's a punishment. In, in other words, actually, uh, if the ground become hard, right, you're not going to receive any blessing from the ground or out of your uh, hard work, right? Sometimes no food. You will be wandering all over. And, the, and, and then continue to say, uh, he left the presence of God. The thing is, when you commit sin against God, you cannot live in the presence of God. The same thing what happened to Adam and Eve when they disobeyed God and obeyed the devil and when they ate the fruit which, is, which was forbidden, they were chased out of the Garden of Eden. Similar thing happening to Cain because he killed the blood, I mean he killed Abel, Abel and shed the blood. He was cursed. Right? Sometimes, you know, uh, people normally say, when you take a government, people normally say, oh, our president is not good. Right? The way he, they run the country is not good. Nothing wrong with the president or prime minister. You can see last 75 years in our country. Right? Whoever came to the power, nobody prospered. Right? Uh, our country is going bad to worse. Why? 
I was thinking seriously regarding this. At least one party, when the one party comes, at least something must have happened. Actually, some uh, changes must take place. But our country is going bad to worse. Why? Number one reason, I believe, so much innocent blood was shed in our country. Even today. Right? Those days, actually, even while we were driving, if we knock a, uh, knock a uh, cat or dog, if they get caught in the tire, when they get killed, we say, ayo! Because we say, we feel sorry for the fellow. Right? Especially when you drive in the night, when the animals cross, you don't know. That's also if, when you drive fast, you can't stop it. Right? So, you hit the fellow and they die. You feel sorry for the animal. But nowadays, even humans, so many humans are getting killed. Innocent people are dying. Nobody bother. So that's a curse to the country. Yeah, that's a curse. Sri Lanka shed so much blood. So much blood. I can remember uh, when I was young, uh, during Sirimao Bandarnaika's ruling that time. So, uh, Sinhalese boys and girls, they rebel against the government. If I'm not mistaken, more than 10,000 young people killed. Think about it. And last 30 years war in our country. Tamil people died, Sinhalese people also died. So much blood was shed. Even after that, how many has taken place? Right? So you can't blame the president or prime minister. It's a curse which is really running the course on the earth, especially in Sri Lanka. Right? If this stops, right, shedding the blood, the action of shedding the blood stops in the country, definitely God will take care of the country and the country will prosper. Yes, it's a curse which is controlling the rule. I mean, our country. Okay? Now here, uh, what he, uh, actually, the blood of Abel was speaking. Speaking about what? Vengeance. Lord, I am innocent. You are the one who respected my offering. Why did he kill me? Punish him. So the prayer of Abel was, the blood of Abel was asking for vengeance. So immediately, God answered. He gave punishment to the uh, king. Right? So now, when you take about, on the other side, what the blood of Jesus was speaking. Right? What the blood of Jesus was speaking. When the blood of Jesus was, uh, I mean, every time when the blood of Jesus speaks, he speaks about, first of all, forgiveness for mankind, for their sin, right? Forgiveness and mercy and grace. Mercy and grace and forgiveness, uh, the blood of Jesus speaks all the time. Whenever you come to God, right, when you repent, he forgives. His mercy is available all the time. Right? So, in other words, you can say uh, the entire world commits sin against God at once. The Bible says God's grace abound more than that. Right? So, every single time when the blood of Jesus speaks, he speaks about grace and mercy and forgiveness. Okay? So, uh, So here, when, when you talk about, again, uh, when you think about Cain, he was rebellious. He didn't follow God's instruction. Uh, secondly, uh, he was doing his own way. Right? Sometimes what happened, we do our own thing. Sometimes we ask God to bless it. Hello? I don't know whether you followed it. 
sometimes we decide and we make our own decision regarding anything, our life, right? Without asking God, what can I do regarding this? We make up our mind. We do our own thing and we ask God to bless it. Right? As a pastor, being in the ministry more than 43 uh, years, right? And uh, people come to me. Sometimes they bring, uh, regarding marriage, they can bring uh, one person may be born again, the other person may be not born again. Right? So they are not given their life to Jesus. What they do, the parents come and ask me, Pastor, this is happening, uh, can you pray? Right? So, Pastor is in a really, uh, he doesn't know what to do. He has to just simply pray and go. After maybe six months later or one year later, there will be a problem in the family. And then, they come back again, Pastor, there's a problem in the family, can you pray? So before you ask the pastor to pray, you have to make a decision, everything, whatever, it can be regarding your family life, regarding your business, regarding your, anything regarding, right? First of all, if you ask God, he will guide you. He will lead you. Sometimes people used to say, I pray, but God never speak to me. Right? I understand that. You know why? Our people always wanted big things from God. Big revelation. They never follow uh, little things, whatever God has spoken to him, spoken to them. Right? I was uh, telling this story in the uh, morning service. You know, when we were in Australia one time, uh, I used to go to work in the evening after Bible school. And then uh, she used to stay with the children. Uh, so there was a, in a thumb, there was a fungus grow, growing, damaging the nail. So she used to pray all the time, speaking in tongues and, uh, you know, uh, take care of the family. And then all of a sudden, yes, she has asked, Lord, why? This thing has come to my finger. Right? Simply like asking a person. Immediately the Lord replied to her. This came because you are not drinking water. So simple. Right? And then she started thinking. That is true. Because in our refrigerator we used to keep a whole lot of uh, fruit juice and all kind of sodas filled. So we never think about water, uh, to drink water. She, dis, uh, she started thinking, oh, that is true. I don't drink water. This was causing because she was not drinking water. Right? Sometimes you might think, this little thing God speaks to you? Yes, because he's concerned about you and me. He wants to take care of his children. He wants to do every detail in your life. So if you, because she obeyed, once when he started drinking water, this thing disappeared. But we don't follow a little instruction whatever God gives us. We want big revelation. God can't give you a big revelation because we are not obedient to the little things whatever he speaks. Right? Once when you are obedient to little things, God will show big things to you that you have to understand. Okay? So now, coming back again regarding this uh, thing, and uh, Cain's life always rebellious. Right? That's the reason God did not respect his suffering because he made his own way. He uh, did his own way, so he didn't follow God's way. So every single time when you follow God's way, it will be success. Can you see that? Yeah. Right? Secondly, Abel was very obedient. 
very obedient first of all to the parents secondly uh, to the word of god he brought offering under the guidance of the word of god what are the instruction god has given sometimes what our people do they never give to god and they try to get blessing from god <laughs> you can't get it that way right when it comes to jesus the bible say until the point of death he was obedient to god let's read it uh, philippians chapter 2 verse 8 philippians chapter 2 verse 8 and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, mm. even the death of the cross. Can you see that? Here it says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross right so imagine till his, it came to the death Cruc crucifixion is not an easy thing right and also death was actually it's not an easy thing that death what he faced but even though first of all he was praying lord if it is your will take this cup away from me why he knew the hardship of bearing the cross he prayed it before went to the cross lord if it is your will take this cup away from me but here uh, apostle paul is uh, the revelation what he got he say until the point of death lord if it is your will i am willing to face it that's the obedience he doesn't want to rebel against God. Right? So that is one of the reasons. See, and being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. So every single time, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, uh, I think verse 19 says, uh, if you are willing and obedient, you can eat the fruit of the land. Number one. Right? If you can eat the fruit of the land, if it is God's will for you, you can dress the fruit of the, I mean, uh, in the land, the best of the land. Wearing good clothes is best of the land. You can enjoy it. You can drive the good of the land. <laughs> Hello? Don't know whether you, you're following. I said, if, God's, if it is God's will for you to enjoy fruit of the land, it is God's will for you to dress the good of the land. Right? If it is God's will, then you can drive the good of the land. In other words, you can drive the best vehicle. It's God's will. Sometimes people, I mean the critics, they might say, uh, they might say, uh, why he needed such a big car? Why he needed such a big vehicle? Why he needs a, why can't he go for a smaller one, a broken one, a damaged one, old one? Right? People may criticize, but according to the word of God, he wants his children to have good of the land. Enjoy the best. Amen? So, uh, the second thing, he was obedient. Uh, and then second thing, the Abel's life, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse, say, verse 4 says, he gave to God by faith. He gave to God by faith. Every single time, when you bring the tithes of offering, anything regarding your life, in the kingdom of God, unless you do it by faith, you are not going to receive anything. Abel, at that time, right, the beginning of creation, he gave to God by faith. That's what the Bible says, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel brought offering to the Lord. So that shows me Cain brought the offering not by faith. 
that is the reason god rejected his offering he never accepted okay so going back again uh let's go to hebrews chapter 12 there's so much in it hebrews chapter 12 verse 24 to jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of abel mediator stand it in between right uh mediator mediator mean between god and man in other words regarding man he represent man to god and regarding god he represent god to man he is only person on the earth so when it comes to uh, prayer why jesus asked to pray in his name because he was a mediator he never encourage to ask any prayer through anybody else for that re- uh, the main reason he is the one who shed his blood precious blood on regard uh, i mean regarding mankind so he is the uh, only one qualified to mediate between man and god not anybody else not mary not uh, saint anthony not uh, not anybody else even not pastor selvan ayga i can't stand between you and a uh, god because i am not a mediator the bible says one and only mediator between man and god that is the lord jesus christ yeah he is only one okay so he is a mediator right of the new covenant uh hallelujah let's go to couple more scriptures first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 first timothy chapter 2 verse 5 for there is one god and one mediator between god and man the man christ jesus okay so this is very important there is one there is one god and one mediator between god and man the man right hello the man the man okay the man christ jesus christ being anointed one jesus the man right so most of the people even uh grown up mature ministers of the gospel when you say jesus christ was a man when he was on the earth they won't accept how can you say jesus he is god which i also believe but when he was functioning as a prophet on this earth he was totally 100% human he didn't function as god every miracle whatever he did as a man not as a god he did it as a man of god i mean uh uh as a man right as a son of god not as a son of god he he function on the earth as a son of man he function as a son of man so he is the one who died on the cross he didn't die as a divine person he didn't die as a son of god he went to the cross as a son of man 100% human so here it says for there is one god and one mediator between god and man right man the man christ jesus in other word the anointed man jesus the anointed man jesus he is the one who qualified to stand in between god and mankind right he represent man to god and he represent god to man he is the only one right so uh, through his death right and he it say uh, but we read uh, earlier again to see 
to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, is the mediator of new covenant, because already we have discussed, old covenant is not value. The old covenant was made by the blood of bulls and goats. So it is invalid nowadays. Under the new covenant, the blood of Jesus Christ speaks about. Okay? So he says, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things. What are the better things? What are the better things the blood of Jesus was speaking? <laughs> if it is better than Abel's blood, so what are the better things Jesus, uh, the blood of Jesus was speaking to under the new covenant? First of all, the blood of Jesus speaks about the forgiveness of sin permanently. So once when you, when Jesus, when, once when you come to Jesus, and if you ask forgiveness from any sin, right? So he forgives. Under the old covenant, God forgave people's uh, sin. It's, it was temporary. But under the new covenant, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Right? Actually, I used to normally uh, uh, show as an example, this is actually, uh, we'll say, uh, think about, it's like a box. So under the old covenant, every time when you sin, right, you, as a sinner, you are inside. Right? So in, you are supposed to receive judgment from God because of your sin under the old covenant. So when the blood, I mean, uh, so it is covered. So when the blood of animal, I mean bulls and goats, when the blood of the animal was sprinkled over the box, your sin was covered. When the Lord looks from heaven, so he can see only the blood of blood. He can't see the sin, whatever you have committed against God inside, because the blood covers temporarily. But under the new covenant, what happens is the blood of Jesus completely wash you, purify you, cleanse you. Right? That's the reason under the new covenant where God calls you, you are the righteousness of God. Why? You are qualified to stand before God because of the blood of Jesus. He forgave all the sin, all the wrong thing, whatever you do. So under the new covenant, once when you ask forgiveness of God, he immediately forgives you. Why? Because under the new covenant, you don't need to live all over your life under the guilt and condemnation because you are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Right? Secondly, when the blood of Jesus, uh, the blood of Jesus talk always about grace and mercy. Grace and mercy. Right? Under the new covenant, God never talk about judgment. God, I mean the blood of Jesus, always brought sinners the grace and mercy of God. Think about that. Under the old covenant, you are punished. <laughs> Immediately. I like the way, uh, which is, uh, I mean, Benny Hinn says like this. Right? Under the old covenant, God destroyed, when the people disobeyed him, God destroyed them. Right? Even in the time of Jesus, Jesus, when the people did the wrong thing, he rebuked openly. <laughs> right? Under the new covenant, when you sin against God, the Holy Spirit leaves you. I'm not sure about that. Right? That's the way Benny put it. For us to understand clearly. Right? So, we are under the new covenant. Once when you come to God, even as a worse sinner, His blood is available, His mercy is available, His grace is available. You don't need to live in condemnation. Right? When you make mistake, according to John, uh, 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sin, 
if you confess your sins, plural, and he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all your unrighteousness. That's under the new covenant, right? And then the blood of Jesus speaks about better things. Another area, always blood of Jesus speaks about deliverance for the mankind. He doesn't want any of his children to live under bondage. He wants to live a, for us to live a delivered life. Deliverance from Satan is power. Satan's bondage. That is through the blood of Jesus only it can be possible. Right? And then uh, through the blood of Jesus, whenever the blood of Jesus showed up, or maybe whenever the blood of Jesus speaks to us, it always speaks about the reconciliation between God and man. Right? The blood of Jesus, not with our own merit, not with our own good work. How much are good? The Bible says, our own righteousness is the filthy rag. Only through the blood of Jesus, we become righteous as a God. Right? We, he, uh, the blood of Jesus cleanses us. So, the, we can have the reconciliation with God. Right? <clears throat> and the blood of Jesus speak, uh, talk about the liberty. Lastly, the blood of Jesus Christ speaks always about love, not vengeance. Blood of Abel was speaking vengeance. The blood of Jesus speaks about love. Right? So under the new covenant, all these things are available to us. So what a victorious life we can live. What a joyful life we can live. The blood of Jesus speaks better things, a better thing than the blood of Abel.